Hey all, so I'm going to be looking at some of the new features of Eternal Fury 3.0. This includes Gem Blitz and also the Awakening Dungeon. Now you do need to complete a few quests to unlock these features, so if you don't have them yet, go through the quests and make sure you have done them all. So to start with, let's go on to the Awakening Dungeon. If you've played War Tune, this is very, very similar to Spire. It's basically kill as many enemies as you can. It gets quite hard later on though. It starts off really easy, as you can see from this, all the enemies are dying almost instantly. Yeah, later on the enemies get really difficult and you have to use these buffs in order to get through them. Well, at least at my level you do anyway. So let's get through the easy waves like I'm doing now and then I'll start using the buffs. You may have also noticed there's a new skill. This does damage to all the enemies. This is quite useful to use. Also, there is a healing skill here. Increases the damage taken of all allies. I think what that means is reduces, not increases, as that would make no sense whatsoever. That increases the damage dealt. This is where I always die at, so let's start using the buffs. Try and get through it. So this should increase all the damage. This should reduce the damage all the allies take, not increase it like it says. There we go. This should restore health. Use this, and this should revive one of the allies. Of course, all of this is not going to help me as I'm still going to die here. But yeah, that's what the skills do, and you need those skills to get through the stages, ideally. So yeah, very simple game type. Just get as far as possible. You only have 50 rounds, though, from what I know. So let's use this skill. This is quite powerful. It hits all the enemies. There we go, Falling Meteor. The other problem with this enemy is it heals, so my team is going to die here, almost certainly. I need to get a lot stronger before I try and actually get through this stage, but yeah, this is where I'm getting to each day. And you can also blitz this as well, which is nice. Yeah, that's it. Game over. We have been defeated. Yeah, that's what that is. Auto clear button here if you don't actually want to play it. Similar to the Abyss. Auto clear that up to the stage you have reached so far. So let's play the new Gem Blitz feature. This is really, really simple. Just match three. There's lots of puzzle games like this. If you can't move anything, you can just move any gem. This is actually pretty good as it gives gems from matching. You may want to consider spending diamonds here, that's up to you. So let's go and make a few moves. A bit slow, but that's to be expected. It's not actually many really good moves. Always wanting to try and get as many gems destroyed as possible with each move. That was good. That's the sort of move you want. Now, as you can see here, I'm out of steps. Let's see who I can actually use. I 
only came up with one friend. Unfortunately, the one friend that is online now is away, so I can't show you what that does, but it just destroys a bunch of gems off the grid. You can also buy more steps. Since you can use regular diamonds to do this, I'm going to go ahead and buy some more steps. Gems have been quite difficult to get up until this point, so this is a very welcomed feature. You might as well use diamonds here if you want. I have loads of diamonds saved up. I did actually get a chest here, a level 1 to 4 gem chest. That's pretty good as well. So it's basically 10 diamonds per move. And you get an absolute ton of gems from this. So at this stage in the game, this seems very much worthwhile to do. Later on when gems become more common though, it might not be so worthwhile. Claim all those gems. What did I get out of that? I think that was level, yeah, level three. What I recommend doing once you have all these gems is converting them all into one type. Then synthesizing them up. I always say you should go for damage first over everything, so this is why I'm converting them all into attack. Doesn't cost that much gold. And then you can synthesize them up, then start socketing them. There you go, I made a level 4 gem out of all of those gems. I think these are already level 4. And oh, no, that's a level 3 one there, so let's take that out and replace it with the level 4 attack gem instead. So there we go, that looks alright. I may start working on HP or defense. I do need to unlock the rest of these slots as well though. Let's talk about a few more of the features that are in the game right now. There is this treasury feature. I think you have to use amethysts though to unlock the rewards here. I thought you might be able to claim them anyway, but it seems like you can't. I mean, if you were going to buy any of them, this would be the one to go for, but that's a lot of money. That's like £130 or $160. And that, in my opinion, is totally not worth the money. You like that as well. That's a lot of money. That's a bit better, though. If you really want those golden wings, then that's what you're going to have to do, though. I don't think you can get this for free. Originally, I thought... You would be able to claim the rewards, but you have to buy that first before you can claim them, I think. Alright, so the mystery shop is a relatively new feature. You can get some good stuff from here, so make sure you use your attempts each day. You're really looking for level 3 gems or better, or anything that will really help your account that's not easy to get elsewhere. So like that level 3 gem chest, I'm going to buy that as gems are still relatively difficult to get in the game. I think let's try one more refresh. I think I have the level 4 gem chest as well. You want to make sure you do this each day and try and get the best rewards you can. You only get two purchases per day though. Well, with my VIP level anyway. But yeah, it's a good feature for the game. Another place that you can use diamonds, so that's always welcomed. So there is also Dragon Tower and Hoppy Easter slots on right now. So you do get a few attempts for these for free. In the Dragon Tower, the best rewards are at the higher levels, so you need to hit this space to move up a level each time. It's up to you if you want to spend here. It's going to work out expensive though. You need to get to the higher levels to make this worth doing. So it's going to cost you a lot of money if you are going to go for this. 
Oh, I moved up a level. That's good. There we go. And if we go on to the slots. I've not tried this yet, so... Can't really say what it's like. Let's see what I get. Power potion. Yeah, that's not especially exciting. Gold, well, yeah. That's a very little use. Oh, wait a sec. Goddess Topaz, that's not bad. Not sure how much it costs per spin. I don't think this is really worthwhile, if I'm being honest. I mean, a lot of the time you're going to get really bad rewards from this. It's up to you, but... Experience scrolls and gold are basically junk items and you can see from this what sort of rewards everyone else is getting. Up to you if you want to spend there, but I think Dragon's Tower would probably be better. You probably saw but the game actually froze up at that point. There's still quite a few bugs in the game that need fixing, but it's definitely a lot better than what it was. So finally I'm going to do a raid dungeon on my own. Let me just type in a password to make sure no one else joins. There we go. I'm going to do Distributed Retribution Expert. This is more to show the effectiveness of the new skill. I can beat this dungeon on my own. It takes a bit of time though. So with this skill here... If you build it up and save it for the bosses, you should get through the bosses really quickly. This is what I've been doing to do this dungeon on my own. Relatively straightforward dungeon. It takes a bit of time on my own though. But yeah, this is more to show the skill on the bosses. You may have noticed that your rage carries over here as well, so you can save up your skills. Before the previous update, I don't think your rage was carrying over, so... This makes it a bit easier as well. I'm going to try and build that up as high as possible though for the bosses. With a healing mage, the only attack skills I have are the storm bolt and then this middle skill. I can do this without healing, it just takes a bit of time. There we go. And you see why I'm saving this up for the bosses. It gets you through the bosses really quickly. Is this skill, then the... Whatever skill this is called. I don't know what these skills are even called yet. That one's Repentance, and then... Big Delphic Attack, I'm going to call it. Or Falling Meteor, that's what it's actually called. As you can see, the damage is really good. I think it also has some sort of burn effect. So if you save that for the bosses, you get through them really quickly. Especially useful on the end boss. So I may even be able to start doing the 50 dungeon on my own now. Makes it a lot easier to run this on your own. It tends to take a lot longer if you're with a team, unfortunately. There we go, let's get through the enemies. I'll just skip ahead to the bosses, I think. You don't want to see me kill all these regular enemies. So there we go, this is the second boss. Repeat what I did with the first boss, and it gets through the boss really quickly. So yeah, if you're doing a multiplayer dungeon, this is pretty much the strategy now. Save your big skills for the bosses. 
it actually does huge damage. So I think I can take on 50 normal, but I want to get a bit stronger first, I think, just to be on the safe side. This is easy now, though. So here we go with the end boss. Same process as with the other bosses. This one's quite a bit harder though. Use the big skill to destroy really quickly. Yeah, there we go, falling meteor. The reason it does so much damage is it has this sort of bleed effect as well, I believe. Yeah, it makes the bosses a lot easier now though. So this skill is pretty powerful. There we go, the Inferno Lord is defeated really quickly and nice and easy. So there we go, let's go and claim the reward. I did actually miss that chest. I should have got that, but that's my own fault. Never mind, it doesn't really matter. So there we go, that about covers this video. I hope that was interesting. As always, if you do have any questions or suggestions, please let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to help. If you did enjoy this video, leaving a like and subscribing to the channel is always appreciated. Thank you to those that have already subscribed. There are a few other videos on the screen as well you may enjoy. Feel free to check those out if you want to do so. And thanks for watching.